you so much for joining us tonight as we look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Turn there in your Bibles. And we've been looking at heroes of the faith. And tonight we're looking at one of our greatest heroes of the faith, the Apostle Peter. So uh, take your Bible and let's look at these verses together. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuine of your faith, the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, Amen. whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless the reading of his word. So as we look at these verses, I want you to remember these words are written by an ignorant <laughs> fisherman. Okay? No. Written by him, but words from God, right? So, I've known many people in my life that didn't have much of an education in school. Some of them barely passed high school. But boy, I tell you, after they grew in the Lord, that you, you would think they had a seminary education. Uh, I even have some brothers in Christ who never went to college, and I call them doctor now. Because they sound just like a seminary professor when they talk about the Lord. And only God can do that. God did that for Peter, and God can do that for you as well if you will choose to grow in the Lord. So let's look at these verses together real quick. Again, slowly and surely, and, and uh, see all that God wants us to see through them. So he begins by saying, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't leave Jesus out there. You know, so many people think you should only pray to God. You should only praise God, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. But they don't know the rest of the words of the right. Word of God, do they? Because the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three persons in one God. And so we understand that each are equal and each can be prayed. But just, you know, just because he doesn't mention Jesus and the Holy Spirit doesn't mean he's leaving them out. Okay, because Jesus made it very clear that he was God and that he should be praised. And Peter did praise Jesus before he ascended into heaven and after as well. So, blessed. You know, many interpret that word happy. It's so much more than happy. I don't like those translations that substitute that word for happy. Because God does so much more for us than make us happy, doesn't yeah. he? Amen. I mean, what he does for us makes us happy. It should. But... It means so much more than that. Yeah. It has to do with the fact that all blessings come from Daddy Yahweh. And he loves to bless his children. So let's go ahead and, and write down the, the words to this message. And first of all, I want to tell you the title of the message is The Hall of Fame. Heroes of the Faith, the Apostle Peter. From 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 3 through 9. So write this down for number 1. Our faith should be modeled after the Apostle Peter, who prays Daddy Yahweh for our precious faith that produces, number 1, his abundant mercy. And we see that from 3a. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. So I want you to remember that you were chosen as a child of God before God ever created the earth and the universe. Because, see, God knows all things. And God knew that you would choose to receive him and his gift of grace and mercy 
and eternal forgiveness. And you would submit to him as Savior, Lord God, friend and shepherd. So he calls, he calls our faith precious faith. So many times the word of God, our faith is precious. Everything God gives us is precious. Think about a, a precious stone that costs so much money. It, it is something that is very rare. And so God's gifts to us, they're very rare. And they produce abundant mercy. His gift of faith, salvation. You know, we can't even begin to believe the word of God. We can't even begin to believe in God's gift of forever forgiveness until God enlightens us. He won't enlighten us until we're ready to submit, until we're ready to open our heart and mind and truth and reject all the lies of false teachers and the devil and accept the truth that he gives us abundant mercy. And remember what mercy is. It's God choosing to pay the price for us through Jesus. And so that abundant mercy that we look at, not only has to do with his crucifixion, but folks, it goes back to God's blessings of creation. Everything he created was for our enjoyment. See? And, and heaven will be so much greater than earth, it'll be what earth was supposed to be. And it, it will be perfect. Uh, he blesses us with his abundant mercy as our provider. He promised, I'll always take care of you. I love Matthew 6.33. Put Jesus first, try to live the way he wants you to live by his power, and he will give you everything that you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added to you. We need to praise him continually for being our provider. Sometimes we take that for granted. And also, as Jesus walks with us and talks with us as our, our Lord, our friend, Daddy Yahweh is our good, good father. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter. He walks with us and blesses us and encourages us all through the day. And even in persecution, he allows that in his abundant mercy so that we will grow, so that we will be changed, so that we will mature in Christ. Every blessing now, every blessing forevermore. Is part of that abundant mercy that he gives us. And go ahead and look at the rest of that. He has blessed us. He has given his abundant mercy to us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And he talks there about he's begotten us again to a living hope. That's not a hope that dies away. That's not a hope like the world says that, oh, I hope this happens. But it's, it's an expectant yeah. assurance Amen. that God is going to give us what we need based on faith, based on abundant evidence that what we believe is true because he's given us all that evidence that we need, Amen. a living hope. And that goes along with the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. These three remain, faith, hope, and love, see. And so I want to look just a minute at the difference between faith and hope. Faith is complete assurance based on evidence, see. Uh, the evidence we have is Jesus fulfilled all prophecy. Only God in the flesh could do that. There's an abundant evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. There's abundant evidence that you are born again. He's changed you completely. You go back and say, this is the way I was. And this is who I am now. Abundant evidence every day as God answers prayer. And so we have faith based on that abundant evidence that God has given us. So, so this is that evidence too. You know, the prophecy, he was born from a virgin in Bethlehem. I mean, that's a miracle in itself. Only God in the flesh could experience that. He healed every disease. He raised the dead back to life. He was crucified, himself rose from the dead. And the Lord Jesus Christ continues to show us his love and his goodness and his faithfulness as we look at the faithful martyrs that have stood strong for the Lord and 
again, and more than a carpenter, the chapter called, Who Would Die for a Lie? You know, that's, a, that's abundant evidence. One of them would have cracked and said, oh, we're making it up. He, re, he really didn't ra- rise from the dead. We really didn't see him. But they, they died for that, didn't they? They all did. Except for John, who died of old age in prison, which was even worse because he had to spend all that, all, many, many years in prison uh, and, and waiting for that time that he could be taken home to be with his family, his brothers that he served with. So not only do we have that evidence, but the evidence we have of Jesus working in our lives. And hope is confident expectation based on that faith, see. So... They both work together, don't they? And you can't have hope without faith. No one can have hope without God's saving faith he gives us. And and just like every good thing is a gift from God, both are gifts from God, aren't they? So our faith should be modeled after the apostle Peter who praised Daddy Yahweh for our precious faith that produces, number one, his abundant mercy. Number two, our living hope. Number three, our inheritance in heaven. And there we see that in verse 4. So look at that with me. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Today we looked at the words of Daniel Webster who said, you know, you can put all your time into working with marble and bronze and gold and all things. But all those things that people work with, diamonds, it will all be destroyed. It will all be destroyed. Because only what God gives us and our inheritance in heaven will last forever. It cannot corrupt. It cannot be defiled. Because it always stays fresh and new. And even heaven, as wonderful as heaven is right now for our loved ones that are there. Uh, you know, we need to be people of open hearts. People that are willing to experience God's changes in life because they won't be able to stay in that heaven. You know, they can't say, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm so happy with this mansion you gave me. It's just, it's just perfect. Everything in heaven is just perfect. You know, we're used to it now. We've been here, you know, hundreds of years now. And, and you know, we really, we really, I don't want to look at a new place. I don't want to get used to a new heaven and a new home and, and God, you know, we won't talk about that in heaven, will we? Because we'll have kingdom perspective. Yeah. But why do we talk that way now? Yeah. Why do we not want change now? Oh, because we're human. Well, grow up! <laughs> and allow the Lord Jesus to help you to be open to his kingdom perspective, which is always full of change. Yeah. And, and history has shown us, especially in the 19th and 20th centuries, and it goes on in the 21st century that, that churches that are not open to change will die. Businesses that are not open to change will die. It's those that are willing to make those changes that continue, continue to attract the new generations to what they need, their needs. You know, God's word never changes. We're never to change God's word. It always abides for every generation. It always applies to every generation. But we can change what kids are used to, what the younger generation is used to. And that's why churches have sometimes three and four different services, you know, to meet the needs of those people that come to those services. And, and, and also the programs and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you, you want to continue to seek God's direction. Always be completely open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, there, there are some things that never change, and heaven is one of those. The, our inheritance, now, even though it's going to be a new heaven, we still will have that inheritance yeah. that will never change. Yeah. Our loved ones will be there with us. Yeah. And, and we trust God yeah. that he knows what's best. Yeah. We know that he can make and will make a better heaven. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I look forward to that. I look forward to a better College Avenue Baptist Church one day. Because, see, God continues to make things new and better and better if we're open to yeah. that. So he gives us something that we can look forward to on this earth is our inheritance in heaven that can never be stolen from us yeah. or taken away. 
Look at verse 5 again. Who are kept by our own striving and good works. Is that what that says? We're not kept by our own strivings and good works. You know, when I was in the band in eighth grade, I played the drums in the band. <laughs> and we went to the, we had played the ninth grade football games. And there was a dad that, you know, different parents would go get the refreshments at halftime. And they were responsible for that. And there was this one guy's dad who was just, he's kind of like Barney Fife at his most nervousness, you know. Uh, he was just highly nervous and, and, and just, just always on edge. And I'll never forget uh, when, when it was halftime and he was, doing, he was talking and laughing with one of the kids or whatever. And all of a sudden it was time. He, all of a sudden he says, is it time? Is it time? And see, that's what people are like when they don't have that confident assurance. The heaven's their home, see? That they are so nervous. They're not sure that they're kept by God's power. And when it's time to die and they know their body's giving out, their spirit's going to leave that body, they have that same, is it time? Is it time? Instead of a confident, yeah, it's time. It's time. Lord Jesus, into your hand. I commit my spirit. Yeah. You are faithful. You're yeah. a good, good father, daddy. I want, Lord, thank you for my inheritance in heaven. Yeah. See, that's confident assurance. Yeah. That's peace and joy yeah. that heaven is your home. 1 John 5, 13, these things are written. Why? So you can know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you can know that you have eternal life. Yeah. See? No doubt about it. And John 17, 3. Eternal life is to know God and to know Jesus Christ. You know him here, you're going to know him forever. You love him here, you're going to love him forever. You praise him here, you're going to praise him forever. You serve him here, you're going to serve him forever. If you don't, it might be a good thing to do to get saved. You know? <laughs> because... You know, the way we live here is really either evidence we're born again or a lack of evidence yeah. that we're born again. Either we have evidence we love Jesus or we have show evidence that we don't think about him too much. You know, some people call themselves Christians and they despise Jesus. They never admit to that. I don't despise Jesus Christ. I, I love him. I believe in him. Well, why haven't you served him? Why aren't you using God's gifts he's given you in church? I don't see that happening. Why do you just go Christmas and Easter or when you need him? Why do you just pray to him when you think you need help? See, when you are born again, you know him in a personal relationship, the Savior and Lord. And it's natural. It's real. And you have total assurance that you were kept saved by the power of God. Yeah. And you've got that peace and that joy. See, verse 5 is one of the greatest verses on eternal security. Once saved, always saved, if truly saved, who are kept by the power of God. There's that due to his power again that I preached about Easter Sunday. Dynamite power. You're kept by his power. He's the most powerful being in all the universe. You know, today I was thinking about uh, how when a, when a baby is born and all those parts in his body, how can anybody say that it just, it's just, it just happened? The big boom just made, yeah, that big boom was God creating everything. On the way to church, Donna's dad brought out this little container of Donna's teeth when she was a baby that he found in his stuff. And he said, honey, you want that? And she said, I just throw it away. I said, no, don't you throw it away. That's precious to me. That's going to be precious to our grandkids. And then I began to think about it. Think about how God creates those little teeth. 
And right about the time they start teething and crying and it hurts and they're breaking through, they're able to start eating solid food. Very symbolic of what the writers of the Bible, God's Holy Spirit gave them that, that we should be eating solid foods as mature Christians. Yeah. And then as, as the body grows and matures even more, those little teeth fall out and you get bigger teeth to eat bigger things and bigger steaks. <laughs> Only God can do that. Yeah. Only God knows when those teeth need to fall out. And with every time there's change, there's a little pain. Remember my grandmother putting a string around my tooth that wouldn't quite come out, and she and I didn't know, you know, I never saw her do it before. And she and she took and I went, oh. and it hurt, and she said, the pain's gonna just go away. Just pray, the pain's going away. And I prayed and it went away. And I just hugged her. I was, I was crying and I hugged her. And then I was so looking forward to that tooth fairy. <laughs> those, those were precious, precious days. Precious, loving Christian family. And see, it's all God working to make that body work. And to give you loving Christian family to bless you and take care of you. And church family to love you and take care of you and bless you. He keeps you, see. You are kept by the power of God through faith. See, it's always through faith. Isn't it? You don't have faith, you're not kept. Well, how about that person over there? Well, they lived for God. They were praising God. One guy even taught a Sunday school class. And he, well, he just acts like the devil now. He never prays and never goes. Well, you know what? He was probably never born again. I've seen many people like that. Only God can know for sure, but it was probably just a phase he went through, see? Because you're kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And that's the beam of seat judgment there, folks. Revealed in the last time. You know, the blood of Jesus covers all sin. We're forgiven forever, but there's going to be accountability. The, the presentation of the rewards, and we're going to all wish we were more faithful. We're going to all wish we had more reward to push at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, you are worthy of these rewards. Only by you was I able to do any good thing. So, so write this down for the next part there. Our faith should be modeled after the Apostle Peter who praised Daddy Yahweh for our precious faith that produces, number four, our eternal security. We are kept by the power of God. When somebody says you can lose your salvation, when somebody says that if you sin too much, God's Spirit's going to leave you, have them open their Bible and read that verse and ask them how they interpret it. John 3, 16 should be enough. Yeah. If you know it, say it with me. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have temporary life. Everlasting. Oh, it's everlasting, isn't it? <laughs> Eternal life. So, does it mean eternal? Or did he lie? Yeah. He doesn't lie. It begins and it never ends. Yeah. It's not based on our good works. Right. It's based on his work. Yeah. Through Jesus on the cross. Yeah. It's based on his keeping power. See? Remember that. 1 Peter 1, 5. You should always have that memorized. Take them to let them read out loud themselves. Number six, verse six. And this you greatly rejoice. Now, isn't that awesome? Oh, we have so much to rejoice about, don't we? Mm -hmm. Not just a little bit of rejoicing, but you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. See, he's talking to people here who are being persecuted for their faith. Some of them even lost loved ones that were killed for being a Christian. And he's encouraging them. He's saying, listen, this is just temporary. Even Peter was killed for his faith. They said that he would not die on a cross right side up like Jesus. He said, I, I don't deserve that. Crucify me upside down. That's how Peter died according to church history. So he was looking forward to heaven when he was hanging on that cross, wasn't he? See, in this you greatly rejoice. Verse 7, that the genuine of your faith, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Number five. Our faith should be modeled after the apostle Peter who praised Daddy Yahweh for our precious faith that produces refining fires on earth. 
And you know, we don't look forward to that. Uh, we don't want difficult things to happen in our life, but folks, it's just part of the Christian life. It's just part of the Christian life. And God says, I will help you through that. I will make good happen from that, if you allow me to. Romans 8, 28, never forget that. All things, all the difficult things of life, all things work together for good. To those who get mad at God, to those who curse God, to those who get furious at God allowing things to happen that are bad. I've been so good and faithful to you, God. How could you let this happen? Another family member died. God! See, some people need to be saved. And those that talk like that that are saved need to God's help to mature. They need for you and I to help them understand you're blaming the wrong source here. You're blaming the fireman for the fire. He's here to put it out. Why are you beating up the fireman? He can't even put up out the fire when you're beating him up. Yeah. And God can't bless you if you're beating him up with your mouth mm. and your soul. Mm. He can't bring good from it if you don't allow him to. So it's important that you understand this is happening for many good reasons. And God, use me to bring good from this. All things work together for good to those who love God. Love Him as first love. Serve Him as first love. Those who love God and are called according to His purposes. They follow Him. They obey Him. They serve Him as shepherd. So those refining fires on earth are for our good. And for the good of others and for the glory of God. And if they would never happen, folks, we would never experience the next phase, the next level mm -hmm. of blessing mm -hmm. that God wants us to experience and enjoy in this life. Number six, our faith should be modeled after the Apostle Peter who praised Daddy Yahweh for our precious faith that produces praise, honor, and glory to God. And we see that in 7b. So everything we do, everything we say, Every decision we make should be that God would receive more praise. Right. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. To the praise, honor, and glory to God. That's what I was talking about this morning. You know, you want people to be so blessed by your life that they're able to say, that person was my greatest teacher. That person was my greatest blessing. Life on earth will be totally different without that person. But praise God, somebody else is going to come along and bless me. Because God's going to provide. Yeah. You know, maybe you have lost a loved one that just can't be replaced. There'll never, there'll never be another one like that Christian. You know, there will never be another mother that will love you like your mother loved you if she was a born again Christian. But you know what? God provides others that will love you with all their heart. Yeah. If and only if you seek them. Because see, I remember when, when we would move to a new church and my daughter would say, oh, daddy, first day of school was so hard. I didn't know anybody. Nobody was my friend. I said, honey, the Bible says if you want a friend, you got to be a friend. Two weeks later, she was the happiest girl on earth. Oh, daddy, I'm making so many friends. Jesus is answering our prayers. It was just so exciting. And see, that's what God does. If you reach out. And you allow him to use you to build relationships with other Christian family, church family, even people around you that are unbelievers for the purpose of winning them to the Lord's See, So I encourage you tonight to look at the life of Peter, our hero of the faith. And we see all these things that faith produces, see. These are evidences of a life filled with faith in the Lord and faith in his promises. God is so very, very faithful. You know, one thing I didn't mention is that word we are kept by the power of God. That word kept is a military word, meaning guarded, shielded. The tense of the Greek word reveals that we are constantly being guarded 
by God, who has all power to guard, shield, and protect us on the earth. And we cannot die until God says, okay, come on, your work on earth is done. The Lord assures us that he will make 100% sure we arrive safely home in heaven. Some people, some Christians have said, oh boy, I hope I don't die doing something I wish I hadn't done. And we, you know, you don't want to die that way in the middle of some sin that you think nobody will find out about. You don't want to die that way. You don't want to die with having a, having a, you know, some, I've, seen, I've heard of this, that some Christians have died having a fight with their loved one and their heart is, you know, they gave too much of their energy to that and they died having a fight with their loved one. Sad, sad situation. I've heard of Christians dying and they haven't reconciled with people. And they wish, they probably, I'm sure when they got to heaven, they wish they had. And that's why God says, do everything you can possibly do to reconcile with those people. But know that even if you die right in the middle of some sin or bad behavior, sinful behavior, you can know that your shepherd is faithful. You can be 100% sure we will arrive safely home in heaven. Those who believe they are saved by good works hope they can arrive in heaven by their own power. Sorry, your power just ain't good enough. There's no way. But there is a way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through you doing good works and striving to get there. No, 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 no. No one can come to heaven except through me. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Yeah. He keeps you, see. Jesus is a loving, faithful, trustworthy, good shepherd who will always keep his promises to us. And that's what we have to share out in this world, folks. That's what our faith must produce is those words of promise and encouragement to a world that needs to hear that. So many feel like I've done too much and there's no way I'll ever go to heaven. Um, my mom witnessed to my aunt, her brother's wife. And she realized she'd never witnessed her before. She asked her if she was sure she was going to heaven. She had that peace and joy. And my aunt told her, she said, Nancy, I am so assured beyond a shadow of doubt that I'll go straight to hell for everything that I've done because I've lived such a horrible life. And my mom said, you don't have to do that. Yeah. You don't have to go that way. It's never too late. Jesus loves you, and it's never too late. And she told about examples she knew from the Bible and in, in this life about people who had just lived horrible lives and been totally changed around by the Lord. Dark, sinful, horrible lives. Totally changed and turned around. Become a new creation. No longer the same. The old has died. The new has come. So the world needs that good news, don't they? It's never too late. You'll never understand how awesome God's love is until you ask God to help you understand it. See? His forgiveness it's not like anybody forgives in this world. It's, it's, oh, it's, there's not even a word for it besides no. ask a sight. <laughs> it's ask a sight and forgiveness. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't remember it anymore. I don't remember your sin. Yeah. I don't, I choose not to remember your, you, what are you worried about? I don't remember that. And don't tell me about it. I don't want to hear about it. That was the old you. That person's dead. Dead as a doornail, and you are a new creation in me. And those are the things we're going to remember. Let's not talk about when you messed up as a Christian either. Because you're just a baby and you enjoy touching that hot stove, but that's okay, you learn from it. Sin hurts you. But let's talk about the good things that God did through you. Let's talk about the good things that the Holy Spirit did that only He can do through you. And let God do that more and more every day. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for changing us. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us evidence 
of saving faith by how you have spoken through us and lived through us. And we give you all the glory, Jesus. So God, help us to share these great words, these ask us sight words from you through Peter, the ignorant fisherman, that we would be able, Lord, to share with others these precious treasures from heaven. Lord, help us to be willing to be used by you like Peter was, who always stuck his foot in his mouth, but he grew up. He got strong in the Lord. Help us to get stronger and stronger in you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you.